In this problem, we're told that a fixed gas uh, that's at a temperature of 21 degrees Celsius, so I'm going to write T1 equals 21 degrees Celsius, uh, exhibits a pressure, so this is going to be its P1, of 752 torr, uh, and occupies a volume, so this will be V1, of 5.12 liters. In part A, it says calculate the volume, so V2, or V final, is what we're trying to determine. If the gas, uh, or the gas will occupy, if the pressure is increased to, uh, so in other words, P2 is going to be 1.88 atmospheres while the temperature is held constant. Hopefully you should understand that if you increase the temperature of a gas, its volume is going to increase, or if you somehow put the uh, gas inside a, a container whose volume can't increase, but you increase the temperature, the pressure is going to increase because those molecules are going to start going nuts and increasing the pressure. So either volume goes up or pressure goes up as temperature increases or vice versa. And so that takes us once again to the combined gas law, which says that P1 times V1 divided by T1 is equal to P2 times V2 divided by T2. This is a case where we're trying to determine what the final volume is going to be if all else is held constant. So whenever I'm doing a pressure calculation, in fact, throughout this entire chapter, chapter 10, I always, always, always convert temperature to kelvins. Always. And the reason is because you can't deal with temperatures that have zero degrees Celsius, for example, when you throw that in the denominator of a fraction. It's just going to mess you up. And negatives can also screw things up, so I always change them to kelvins. So if you take 21 de degrees Celsius and you add 273.15, that will give you the number of kelvins, which ends up being 294.15. So I'll go ahead and replace that, 294.15. We also want to make sure that our, uh, that our pressure units match. I've got tor here and I've got atmosphere here. Um, I'm not certain if it would actually make a difference which of those you'd use. However, for the fun of it, I'm going to keep everything in tor. I've asked you to memorize that uh, one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. And guess what? A tor and a millimeter of mercury, same thing. So it's uh, one atmosphere is equal to 760 tor. You throw that in your calculator, the atmospheres cancel each other out. And you'll discover that pressure two ends up equaling 1428 uh, tor. The point of this problem is to determine what the final volume is going to be. So V2 is going to equal something when we monkey around with all these other parameters. So what I'm going to do is use the magic of algebra. In fact, I'll go ahead and write down the word algebra right here. I'm going to get V2 on one side, and then I'm going to get everything else on the other. So V2 is going to be equal to P1 multiplied by V1 divided by T1. All of that multiplied by T2 divided by uh, P2. Okay. Now, for the rest, for, for the remainder, all I have to do is throw in each of these values. So for P1, I've got 752 tor. For V1, I've got 5.12 liters. For T1, I've got 294.15 kelvins. Now for T2, the problem tells me that the temperature is held constant. So T2 and T1 are the same. So I can go ahead and write down T2 as being 294.15 kelvins. And for P2, it's uh, 1428 tor. One thing that's beautiful about this is you should see, if you set it up properly, that, well, that all the units cancel out, and you should be left with the units you're looking for. We're looking for a volume, so we should be left with liters as our unit for our final answer. The tors cancel each other out. Conveniently, the kelvins cancel each other out, out as uh, do the values, the entire type 294.15. And I'm left with the only unit remaining, which is liters. You uh, throw that in your calculator, plug and chug, the final answer ends up being, according to my calculations, 2.70 liters with hopefully the correct number of significant figures, 3. In the second problem, I have the same gas whose temperature is uh, sitting at 21 degrees Celsius, which we once again determined is 294.15 kelvins. So that's its initial temperature, or T1. It's sitting at a pressure, or P1, initial pressure, of 752 torr. And its initial volume, V1, is equal to 5.12 liters. Once again, uh, in this question, it's asking us to calculate the final volume. So V2 is the mystery. The gas will occupy if the temperature is increased. So I've got T2 being changed to, uh, or uh, T2 being 175 degrees Celsius, while the pressure is held constant. So pressure, 
uh, P1 and P2 are equal to each other in this case. I'm once again going to use the combined gas law, uh, <clears throat> and I want to make sure that all of my units match. I always, always, always want to convert to kelvins for any of the things from chapter 10. Anytime I'm doing a, a gas calculation, I always convert to kelvins. So I take 175, I add 273.15, and that gives me uh, the total number of kelvins as being 448. 0.15 kelvins. Okay, so the mystery that we're trying to figure out is V2. So what I want to do is use algebra, algebra to get V2 on one side and everything else on the other. You'll notice that V2 algebraically equals P1 V1 divided by T1 multiplied by T2 divided by P2. Uh, if we look back at this P1 and P2, it says are equal. So I can probably jump the gun, which I didn't do in the previous one, and just cross these guys out. So what I have left then is V1, 5.12 liters, multiplied by T2, which is 448.15 kelvins, divided by T1, which is 294.15 kelvins. The units should all cancel each other out, leaving me behind the units that I want. The Kelvins do cancel each other out, and they leave me behind units of liters. That is a correct unit for volume, so everything should be okay. Now it's just plug and chug. When I throw that into my calculator, the answer that I end up getting is, with the proper number of significant figures, 7.80 liters.